Welcome to Coffee with Viking. I am Mike. Cheers. And we are on session three, part two A True Kingdom. In the last study, we saw that Daniel was given a supernatural interpretation of the king's dream, which saved his and his friends' lives. Today, we're going to read what the dream itself was. Daniel chapter 2, verses 28 through 45. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known their for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation of the king. To the king, in that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Thou, O king, sawest and beheld a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, its breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass. His legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away that no no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image came a great mountain and filled the whole earth this is the dream and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king thou o king art a king of kings for the god of Heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power and strength and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beast of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath been he given into thine hand and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold, and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass which shall bear Roll over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdue all things, and as iron that breaketh all things shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with the merry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of the iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken, 
And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. The interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream is an important piece of prophecy because it reveals the core substance of our message to Babylon. Below is a chart that outlines the symbolism of the dream. I'm interpreting this is the way many scholars do, but the point isn't who exactly are the toes of the statue. The ambiguity in the Bible is intentional. If God had wanted us to know more specifics, he would have given them to us. The point is what God is saying to all human kingdoms. In the parts, the material, in the empire represented, the head, gold, represents Babylon. The chest and arms, which are silver, meadow Persian. The stomach and thighs are bronze, which is Greece. The legs, iron, which is Rome. The feet, iron and fired clay. Dispersed Roman Empire. And the stone is made of rock in its future Masonic kingdom. Nebuchadnezzar's dream showed a series of successive kingdoms being overthrown and taken over by the one behind it. This side of heaven, we can't know for sure beyond the first two what kingdoms the prophecy referred to. But one thing is perfectly clear. In the dream, the stone represented the kingdom of God that stands above and beyond all earthly kingdoms. Okay. What does the description of the stone teach us about our message to Babylon? Um, that one day it will fall. That it is at the top right now, but it will fall. Why would this have been relevant to Daniel in his situation? And... Well, he was facing execution if he could not represent it, and he did not know what the king dreamed. So he prayed, and this is just showing proof that God not only answers prayers, but he reveals things to us that there would be no way of us actually knowing, like Daniel knowing the king's dream and the meaning behind it, and that it was revealing that all these kingdoms are going to fall because in the end there is only one true kingdom, which is God's kingdom. Consider a few things about the stone. First, the stone was made without human hands. It came about with no human agency. The second rock 
is the least valuable substance. Second rock is the least valuable substance in the dream, yet this rock came with the power of God, and so it shattered into dust the more expensive metals. Jesus was born poor, never owned a home, and never raised an army, yet he came with the death-defying power of God. Third, the rock started small, but eventually grew into a mountain that filled the earth. When Jesus ascended to heaven, you, you could put all of his followers into one room. He didn't leave an army or a fortress like Nebuchadnezzar or Alexander or Muhammad. Yet the small movement has swelled into one of the largest religious movements in history. And, the, and that leads us to our core message to Babylon. God sent a rock to earth called Jesus, who will destroy every false kingdom built by man, whether large geopolitical kingdoms or the independent little kingdom of your own life. As we wait in Babylon, we have the hope and confidence that Babylon is not forever, but the kingdom of our God is, and one day it will be the only kingdom in power. It will be the only kingdom around. All others will be destroyed. How will this prophecy help you shine in Babylon? Well, in all honesty, it uh, tells us that Nothing in this world will last forever except for Christ, his message, and his kingdom. So if you want something that will last and something that that will be in true control where true victory in this world lies, the kingdom to follow would be God's kingdom. The king to follow would be God. Would be Christ Jesus, the King of all kings. Thank you, God, for your everlasting kingdom. May we be men that seek you for your kingdom to come and your will to be done. thing is these teachings it isn't just about the Daniel's time in Babylon in his time it is about whatever Babylon you live in whether it be the US whether it be across the sea and it doesn't matter what you serve it's not about Nebuchadnezzar. It's about it's about what we serve, whether it be money, power, possessions. Those can become our gods too. That's what these teachings is about, is about overcoming all of this. Letting God lead you through the fire of life and not being led by all this stuff that when we leave this world... It's going to get left behind. We ain't taking it with us. The only thing we're taking with us is either what we've done for Christ, our guilt for not doing it, and our soul, which will have a place, whether it be going up or down. So in the famous words of Joshua, choose now who you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Stay blessed. Stay caffeinated. Much love.